Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on the Gratitude podcast interview. And today I have young, he's very young to me, Michael James, who, as I refer to him affectionately as a propeller head, one of the smartest young men I know. I hope he doesn't get offended by that. But I was thinking, I think I've known Michael eight to 10 years now, just a great, uh, great guy. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, David, for having me along. And uh, it's been quite a journey over those eight and 10 years that we've known each other and uh, got to do some work together. So it, it definitely it's great to has. see you uh, holding something like this. And uh, I'm excited to see what you're up to. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's always good to have your energy, as you know. It's, uh, <laughs> what is it they say? You know, if you want to hang around, you want to be energetic, hang around somebody a lot younger than you are. So I'm, of course, old enough to be your dad. So that works <laughs> out perfect. But so let me start you off with a question, Michael, because I'm really looking to get kind of a, a perspective on things from all ages and people on what's happening. So, first question what's been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic these last five or six weeks? Not being on social media. <laughs> really? interesting even though i manage more accounts than i care to share but honestly it's been getting outside and doing the social distancing has been it's like church for me it's very clearing it's very peaceful i'm able to self-reflect and not have outside judgment and energy and it's been um my best way to just honestly take a 30 minute hour walk not be around other people so mm -hmm. i'm not hearing whatever conversations and it's been nice to just go walk around in nature. And right now, I bet out of anybody's door, if you walk 20 minutes, you could find some paths, some nice scenery to just kind of be in peace and enjoy yourself. Yeah, um, that's good. And I've, I've heard that uh, common theme too around the exercise. And it's interesting because you think about social media and what you and I are doing with Zoom and, and different platforms, uh, <laughs> uh, go to web or web meetings or Skype or whatever. It's actually connected people more, but it makes me wonder if some people have gone even deeper into social media because of the pandemic. And that, I just don't know if that's always a good thing because, you know, again, too much of anything probably isn't really good. Yeah. What, what I've noticed personally in the last month is now that people are not working from an office and they're not able to be on social media during office hours, now that they're home, mm -hmm. I see people posting 10 times more stuff oh, really? as an individual. Oh yeah, meme wow. this, funny comment about this and that. Right. It's just amazing. Um, and what I've been saying is like, check your sources online. Mm -hmm. So if you're reading news, look at the domain if it's where it's coming from whether it's cbs or uk.daily backslash blah, blah 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 check your resources because a lot of sites it's really easy to fit, create a fake site and launch it in five minutes uh -huh. and you uh -huh. can really easily turn people's minds pretty quick off you know a couple lines of text and some images so that's that's a even social story. media posts be very mindful of who you're seeing it from and where they're getting it so yeah, that's a great point. I've, I've seen a lot of fake news. And again, you really have to judge. Does that feel right? Or is that just <laughs> exactly the left field? So exactly. That's it's a great, mindful of that, so. great point. Good reminder too. And, and as that gratitude guy and being so focused on gratitude, do you find what you're grateful for today? Has it changed versus five or six weeks ago? Or what you thought about what you're most grateful for as we go through this time? Has that changed? Yeah, I mean... You know, having a lot of time to self-reflect, I'm very grateful to have a roof over my head. I'm very grateful to have a cat. I'm very grateful to have food. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to have clients that have paid my bills. I, you know, I can't imagine a lot of my friends, they don't have a, a business that can create income. Yeah. Like, uh, so I'm kind of in a unique boat. You are as well. You can create business and clients out of thin air, which is great. Very um, unfortunate. There's, you know, a lot of, you know, insurance, banking, restaurants, you know, everybody is kind of feeling it right now. So right. there's certain industries that are doing well and they're kind of actually able to take hold of this time mm -hmm. and really hone in on what services or products are actually selling. And they're able to then look at their inventory and be like, wow, we don't need a lot of this or look at the numbers on this. It hasn't been selling in the last year. Let's maybe get rid of some of this stuff. Right. So there's been some really good that's been happening out of this. Yeah. Um, but it's, again, people being mindful with their time and, you know, looking at what is relevant today versus, you know, six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, no one thought this was going to happen. Exactly. exactly. So now being on social media and having a website that's 
working and having your phone number and email and you know making sure all that stuff works is going to keep you actually in business today so it's true it's true there are a lot of things there are a lot of silver linings from this too i think something like this i mean to look at zoom and it feels like you and i are across the table at starbucks it looks like you're about three or four feet away from you <laughs> and yet we're uh, 90 miles apart or whatever it might be where you live or i live and so it is interesting how that changes and stuff and there have been a lot of things that are as you say are good that have come out of this and and being a guy like you that does a lot of stuff do you have any sort of tips or thoughts or ideas for people that are homebound now that maybe some things they can be doing as long as they're stuck at home for a period of time? Yeah, I mean, I would spend as much time as you can with your kids, your family, your animals. Uh, since if you are able to work at home, really find those areas of time that your focus is really strong. Mm -hmm. Because the kids, the you're going to have to cook dinner. You know, you got all these things that show up in the day. So now that you're home and those things are now much more in your prevalent <laughs> timeline, uh, you know, you kind of have to section out your day in a way. Right. Uh, I do a lot of things in 30 minute or hour increments for business and personal stuff just because I have so many things going on a day. It helps me keep motivated and know, wow, next hour I get to talk to David and it's going to yeah. be an interview. And then you know, next after that, we're having three more meetings and then I make dinner and then, you know, so I know what's coming up and it's organized. When you're at home, uh, you know, the dog could run over the neighbors and get in a fight with the mailman and it could take mm -hmm. an hour out of your day. Right. So having little organized increments has been helping a lot of my clients. And again, they've been able to then relay that to employees at home and have these Zoom kind of conversations where they're not physically in person at, in the office, mm -hmm. but they can have that through these Zoom conversations and you know have a five minute conversation and. That's yeah. great. In fact, I remember uh, one of the individuals said something about take the day seriously. And I know I, I take it very seriously. Now I got up and I shave and I get ready and get dressed and get my good clothes on, put my shoes on, even though I may not be leaving the condo, but take the day seriously and get into the chunks, as you mentioned, which is really good. And then just sort of plan it out and so forth. And, and uh, just because we're home doesn't mean we can't look at it from a business-like standpoint. And, yeah. and, and you mentioned, Michael, your business is definitely like mine. A lot of it's run kind of from the computer. So we are fortunate uh, compared to some people have to be physically at another location or whatever. Uh, anything you're thinking of doing now to kind of sort of hit the ground running when this stops? Because it's going to end at some point. We don't know if it's a vaccine or what's going to happen. But are there any things that you're thinking about, boy, when this thing slows down or I can get back out and about, I'm going to do X, Y, Z? So to answer your last question and this one, I would say that look into the skill sets that are also fun right now for you. Mm -hmm. And you might also be able to turn that into a business. Mm -hmm. So for you, you were able to take that gratitude guy and put him on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And then create an every Monday morning minute and then a book and a, right? Like you have created a future off of YouTube, David. Right. Along with your coaching, your training, your phone calls, like that's invaluable. So I mean, right now, even if you're, there's a 10 year old kid last year, he was one of the largest grossing YouTubers and he was reviewing toys. Wow. Toy companies would, or, you know, would send him a toy and he'd yep. review it for 10 minutes, talk about it, play with it, bash it around. And then he would get 10 million views on a video. Wow. Wow. And he made millions and millions in that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whatever your focus is, whether it's fishing, gratitude, social media, marketing, watches, whatever you're doing, Talk about it. Good maybe point. create a hobby on the side. Create a Facebook page. You got some time. Look into maybe doing a website. You can do them in a day, they say, off of Wix and Weebly and all these other little builders. Mm -hmm. You could turn a Amazon um, shipping business. You could do, you know, all sorts of things. You could grow baby greens in your extra room in your apartment and make a $1,000 a month. Like, there's so many little angles right now, whether it's photography yeah. or dog walking or whatever people are looking for ways to make some extra money but also have some fun while they're doing it but that's a great point though because i think back about uh, some of those different examples you just gave it's only limited by your uh, 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 imagination you know and it's really true because you think like grow baby greens you know do this do that you know look at a toy or analyze toys or whatever it might be and really, if people just would follow through on those ideas that they have, gosh, the vehicles, the Amazons, the internet, the Googles, the YouTubes are all out there for you to use. Well, let me ask you a question, David. How easy would it for you to be to stop that gratitude guy 
and tomorrow you just wake up and you go get a job. Yeah. It'd yeah. be real easy, wouldn't it? Sure, sure. But you don't do that. David's yeah. a fighter and David's going to keep doing that gratitude guy. Well, and there's that word too that I use a lot and it gets overused a lot, I understand, but there's a passionate about it. And there was a great uh, example that I use in my talks occasionally about a friend of mine that I don't know how much money it was worth, but he was, but he wanted to prove a point and he took out a piece of paper and he wrote the check to me for a million dollars. And he handed me the million dollars. He says, you know, I'll give you this million dollars on one condition. And I said, what's that? And he says, effective today, you have to stop being that gratitude guy. And he said, would you do it? And I said, no. And he yep. goes, well, I think you found your passion. Yep. You know? And so it's, it's, it's really cool. Cause that really, that's what it comes down to. And to me, anybody, and I know, especially with the work that you do, Michael, anybody that tells you you've, uh, change their trajectory, how they do business, how they impact people, how they sell their product or services, whatever it might be. Thanks to you, Michael, blank, blank, blank. You just can't put a price on that. It's just I, it's priceless. I'll, be, I'll give you two quick examples. I got two calls within the last two weeks and some past clients from Seattle and then one right here up in Bellingham. Mm -hmm. 26 staff are still in work right now because of my websites and social media energy. Wow. So they called me and said, Hey, Michael, guess what? Our websites are doing very well. These products oh, are fantastic. still selling. And I made Facebook posts and it was, I was really cool. Like I don't, I don't get those calls too often, but they had the time. No, nice. I really wanted to thank me for that. So that was that really is fantastic. That is fantastic. So I know, I know that um, I just finished another website within, well, it was last Friday. So today's Wednesday, so last Friday. So it's been live six, five, six days. Um, and seeing their analytics from the week before, mm -hmm. it's already climbed like 15%. So I mean, wow. just by me relaunching their site, having better SEO, you know, linking out their social media better, it's already climbed. I mean, it, wow. it might- Congratulations. Wow, that's fantastic. Those little things right now are crucial. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, which leads me kind of to my final question is something, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, what, does, does Michael James have a quote or a philosophy or a saying or something that kind of represents your overarching view towards life, whether it gets you through the tough times, gets you through a pandemic or something that kind of represents your sort of life philosophy, if you will? Yeah, I've, I've kept this one pretty close to home and I can't think of where it came from, but I've heard sports figures say it. It's probably been in a million movies, but go big or go home. Oh, I love that. And yeah. from, from when I walked, I mean, honestly, when I went into college, I had to think like that too, because I, I, I knew no one. Mm -hmm. And I was you know, six hours away from anyone I did know. So I have, I really did have to go big or else I was literally going to have to go home and be a loser. Or just not, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't Michael. I didn't make it. Right. But for me, the go big, go home thing, every day I make phone calls every day. I email people every day. I send proposals every day. I do results. I, I mean, that's for me, that's going big and going or going home. Yeah. Yeah. It's really easy to go back to the bed and go cry and maybe yeah. a month later go find a job. Exactly. But for me, like that one line has made me call people that make me go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, I, I man up and I take care of it. And that's what's gotten me here to today. So. And it's something, somehow it's a great one, go big or go home. And I think sometimes it then makes me think of other sayings and this whole thing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I mean, you got to put yourself out there and you've always done a good job on that. And it's going to continue. I know it's paid in the past, but it's continued to pay in the future. But I just think that's so important because a lot of people, that's why I said I wanted to do these that maybe a person picks up, oh, I like what that Michael James said. He made a comment about this, that maybe don't have the imagination, the uh, motivation or the inspiration or whatever, and they pick up on something. But there's just so many ways that we can deal with something like this which on the surface doesn't look good but if you dig a little deeper as i said earlier a lot of silver linings yep yeah i mean think of the day you and i met each other down in linwood yep we went big that day we yeah. both got on stage and we both talked about gratitude and social media yep there was 100, 150 independent business owners there yep you got some clients i got some clients like we took that chance like yeah yeah on a saturday or a sunday or whatever day that was like how many people do that so 
And you know, and it's something being 30, 40 years apart, whatever we are, whether it's your age or my age, we can both echo the same thing that this, it seems like I just met you in your early twenties. Now you are in your early thirties and it goes by fast. And coming from me for somebody as old as I am, it flies by. So go big or go home, take that chance, step out there, do it and make this an opportunity to see if you can figure out better ways to make money. And then even uh, uh, this idea that so many people live paycheck to paycheck to get away from that, to maybe have some reserves and, and have some business is on the side, a side, side gig, side hustle, whatever. So uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, just yeah. as I thought, I knew I'd get some good stuff for you. Thank you so much for being on Absolutely. the podcast, Michael. Thank you, David. This was fun. You bet. Take care. Thank you.